Welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner. Today's topic, what RF circuit designers need to know about dielectric constant, part two. Now here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod. I am a technical marketing manager for Rogers Corporation. Today's topic is what RF designers need to know about dielectric constant. And this is actually part two of the two-part series. So if you have not watched part one yet, uh, it is highly recommended to do that. So this part will make a little more sense, obviously. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and jump into where we left off last time. And that is talking about thickness dependencies for the design dielectric constant. And also, I'm going to talk a little bit more here initially about frequency dependencies and then get into more detail later on. Shown in this chart are circuits that are made on Rogers Materials RO3003 laminate using half ounce ED copper. And uh, the differences shown in this chart are really circuits that are made on that same material, same copper, but at different thicknesses. So the circuits that were used in the 5 mil thick RO3003 laminate is the green curve. And the blue curve are from circuits that were made using the 10 mil thick 3003. Red curve are circuits made from the 20 mil thick 3003. And you can see some distinct uh, differences here where the 5 mil thick 3003 circuits have the highest dielectric constant versus frequency curve. And that makes sense because that's the thinner circuit and that's going to be more dominated by the copper surface roughness effects which will raise the dielectric constant. Then uh, the 10 mil thick circuit is obviously a lower dielectric constant, but also notice that it's flatter, so the slope is a little more straight. And what that really means is there's less dispersion, and dis dispersion means dielectric constant changes with a change in frequency. And the, uh, the lower loss material, which the thicker the circuit is, the lower loss it is if you're using the same material, the lower loss material actually will have a more flatter curve or the slope will be less negative. And in the case of the 5 mil versus 10 mil, you can see the 10 mil is much flatter, has less dispersion. Now, in the case of the 20 mil, you can also see that it's relatively flat at the microwave frequencies. But once you get around about the millimeter wave frequencies, 30 gigahertz or so, now you start seeing a little curvature. And that's actually pretty normal because what happens is you're getting dispersion, not just material dispersion, but you're also getting transmission line dispersion. So when the transmission line is thicker, you actually get more dispersion at higher frequencies. This happens with a thick material such as the 20 mil thick 3003 that's shown here. And it also happens with materials of very high dielectric constant. So that curvature as you go higher in frequency is actually pretty normal. Another thing to consider is the uh, trend here. And the trend is that the thicker the materials, the circuits are approaching a lower and lower dielectric constant. And they will approach the intrinsic value of the dielectric constant. In this case, it is 3.0 for the RO3003 laminate. And uh, that's what happens when you basically get the copper planes far enough apart on a thick substrate to where the phase velocity is not affected by the copper roughness, that really what you're testing is the intrinsic value of the dielectric constant of the material. So if we extended this chart a little bit farther and went to thicker materials like 60 mil thick RO3003, you would see a curve of dielectric constant versus frequency that settles in right around 3.0, which is the intrinsic or the bulk decay value for this material. There are also frequency dependencies, and the frequency dependencies uh, will change from one material to another. And essentially how these things happen are due to dipole moment relaxation. And to explain that a little bit, uh, what, we, what happens is when electric field is applied to a substrate or a dielectric, the uh, dielectric will actually establish uh, dipole moments. And these dipole moments are on a, a molecular level, of course. So as electric field is turned on, the dipole moments are established. When the electric field is turned off, they relax. Turn on and off faster and faster, they establish and relax. And you get to a point where then these dipole moments are being turned on and off so fast they do not fully relax. And when that happens, the uh, added energy from the dipole moments not relaxing actually adds to the electric field displacement flux and it actually increases the dielectric constant of the material. And this is frequency dependency, so this uh, additional energy is going to be different at different frequencies. So the dielectric constant of material will change with a change in frequency and that's called dispersion. Within the range of frequencies where our materials are used, which is typically microwave to millimeter wave range of frequencies, the dielectric constant slope is actually a slight negative slope. So the dielectric constant versus frequency slope has a slight negative trend to it to where as you go higher in frequency, you have a slight decrease of the dielectric constant. And that is known as dispersion, as I already mentioned. Now dispersion will happen differently on different materials, and it's for a few reasons. One of them is in a molecular sense, uh, it's material polarization. So materials that are more polar will actually have more dispersion. 
And then another issue is losses. The material that is more lossy will also have more dispersion, but it's actually more than just material. The circuit that is actually more lossy can also have more dispersion as well. Now the curve that's shown here is actually a curve out of a material science text. And uh, this is a curve that's really showing the trend of dielectric constant versus frequency uh, for a generic dielectric material. Now in the case of the high frequency materials that we offer, this trend uh, all is very valid, but uh, really what happens in, in the range of frequencies that we're normally working within, uh, microwave to millimeter wave range of frequencies, you normally do not see that significant of a slope. Even though there's no scale on the y-axis, there is a, a slope there, but usually with the high frequency materials, it's a very gentle slope, and it's a pretty small change in dielectric constant with a change in frequency. Now let's look at a very wideband response of testing material of the same thickness but with different copper to look at the effects of copper surface roughness. The curve shown here is again using the RO3003 laminate. In this case it is using 5 mil 3003 which is very thin but the difference shown here is actually circuits made on the same laminate but with different copper types. And the orange curve is uh, the response of circuits made using rolled copper, and the blue curve are circuits made using uh, the ED copper. And the difference in copper surface roughness for the ED copper, it's about 1.8 microns RMS, which is considered relatively rough. And in the case of the rolled copper, that surface roughness is about 0.3 microns RMS, which is considered very smooth. And you can see the differences between these where the higher uh, dielectric constant curve is really based on the circuit that has the rougher copper, the ED copper. And the ED copper, of course, is slowing the wave velocity. And again, any circuit that is slowed down for wave velocity, the circuit itself is going to report a higher dielectric constant, even though this material is the same dielectric constant. In the case of the circuits using the very smooth copper, the rolled copper, what you see is the dielectric constant curve approaches the intrinsic value of the dielectric constant of this material. So it's approaching the 3.0. And that's because even though the circuit is very thin and sensitive to copper surface roughness, in the case of the rolled copper, the surface roughness is so smooth, it's really not impacting the propagation constant. So the circuit really is reporting nearly the intrinsic value or the bulk decay of the substrate. Another item to consider is how to use the design dielectric constant values. And the easiest way to do that is really to go to our Rogers Technology Support Hub and download a free software, which is MWI 2016. In that software, you do have the design decay numbers, and the design decay is built into that. So you can select a material, a thickness, a frequency, and it will tell you the dielectric constant. Now, the software is free for download, and really what it is, it's an impedance modeling software, and also it, loss, it uh, models losses as well. And uh, along with that, it will give you the design dielectric constant of any of our materials. You can see in the screenshot of the software that there are choices for the design decay. There's three different choices. And there is a choice to select the design decay due to the bulk decay or the intrinsic value dielectric constant of the material. Or you can also choose the RF design decay or the digital decay. In the case of the bulk decay or the intrinsic decay of the material, when that is selected, uh, that is most often used for issues where the material is being used where there is no copper. And what I mean by that is in multi-layers where you're applying up a lot of different materials, if you have a layer of material that's being used where there is no copper effects, there's not copper on both sides of the material, then this would be a good value to use. Use the bulk decay option and then click on the material thickness and it will tell you what the proper dielectric constant would be used in that case. Another example would be materials that are used for radome. So some of our materials actually are used as a radome uh, where the raw material without copper is placed over the top of a radiating element. And in that case, our materials are not having the, uh, the copper effects. So the bulk dielectric constant should be the value that is used. The other option is the RF design decay. And when using this option, it's typically used for a uh, specific frequency or a narrow band of frequencies. And a good example would be if a RF designer is using um, the software to look at a filter design at, let's say, 3 gigahertz. So at a very specific frequency or a narrow band of frequencies, then this option should be used. So if it's a narrow band of frequencies, and again, it could be a filter, it could be a coupler, but something designed to a very specific range of frequencies, that's when you want to use the design, uh, the RF design decay option. And then finally, the digital decay option or the wideband decay option. 
that's typically used by our fabricator friends where they're looking at, uh, looking at characteristic impedance of a circuit. So many times our fabricators are trying to make uh, printed circuit boards with controlled impedance very often at 50 ohms and they use this software and this is the option that they're going to use to understand characteristic impedance. It's also the option that should be used for high speed digital or any kind of wide band application. This concludes this session of Coonrod's Corner. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you are not already a member, join the Rogers Technology Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more of Coonrod's Corner and other informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Raj mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.